Good night here. Rant one, rant one, checking in. I would just like to say I thank my forefathers and ancestors from sh for showing me the light and the true meaning behind what's really going on around here. And one thing I had to say is it is an adventure. And what we're looking at is uh, Trinity and Horus, Isis, and Osiris. And the topic, the theme is a lot of female deities and goddess had a lot to do with this Bible and what's going on in this earth. And it had a big, major role to play and I just want to big up to them and have homage towards my ancestors and throughout the book that they shoved up their ancestors asses they seem to shit on the female deities as if, as if they never helped anybody including Israel but for most nigger brews, they'll never they'll never get it. For the most part, I hope they're sincerely scared. If if not, then you already know. It's on. And throughout Egypt, you had the trinities, and you had the female goddess worship that also helped out Israel in the time of need where the Most High went ghost or missing. Most of you would think it's just punishment or whatnot, but no, it's not punishment. It is. <laughs> he was missing in action. If you still think that people just made altars of female goddesses and golden calves out of nothing, you're just a fucking idiot. If you consider them to be black people, then black people are very emotional. And they like to see stuff. And boy, oh boy, did these ancient ones give them a show. So they didn't stand pull anything out their ass. They saw a show. If you got power, he got power, she got power. That's the way you should look at it. If you're scared, go to bed. Where do we start? Well, let's look at here. Tiamat. That'll be the Numa Elish. The book that you're not supposed to read because you're scared. But if you actually read it, it's in the beginning. And she's an, well, an entity. And what do they label her as? She is the maiden who gave life, the dragon queen, the primordial waters of being of the Apsu and Tiamat and Compass flowed together and mingled, created all life. Tiamat is associated with the planet, which assisted in orbit around the sun at a position between Mars and Jupiter prior to the collision with planets, Nuguru and the subsequent divisions into the planet known as Earth. The asteroid belt which continues to orbit the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Correct. And more description. Well. Of her if you actually go into the book. And team out hearken. Unto the world and bright god and said shalt thou undress let us rage war the gods of the mist of the gods did she curate they abandoned themselves together at the side of tiamat they advanced they were furious they devised mischief without resting night and day they prepared for battle fuming and raging they joined their forces forces and made war umhabra tiamat who formed all things 
made in addition weapons invincible. She spawned serpents, sharp of tooth, merciless fangs with poison instead of with poison in the veins instead of blood. She filled she filled their bodies. Fierce, monstrous vipers she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them. She made them of lofty stature. So things came after her. Well, came from her. And she made them. Well, she didn't want to make them that way. That's how they came out. With splendor she decked them and made them of lofty stature. Whoever beheld them, terror overcame him. Their bodies reared up and none of could withstand their attack. She set up vipers and dragons and monsters Lamu and hurricanes and raging hounds and scorpion men. Right. So at first she's a dragon and she brought about other vicious creatures. It states in Anuma, Anuma Elish. And there is another book you can go into, which is in your Bible. And it explains Trinity, what, well, yeah, and all these verses. And the stupid ass Christ. The last verse in Genesis three twenty two, and the Lord says, behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now let us put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. I wonder who's us again. You know, it, you know it's more than one being controlling or creating mankind, but you still don't get it. You still don't get it. Now, what can we look into? As you recall my last videos, I point out that I point out that Enoch has a daughter. And her name is Sarpanut, part, Sarpanutit, Sarpanuit, is a Mesopotamian goddess. Name for Ishtar as creator goddess, a name for Bilit, in some accounts, consort of Murdoch. Murdoch, which is one of the people who helped create us children, Anki. And she goes by different names, and some of these names you can find in the Bible. But before that, I have to prove to you that Enoch does have two daughters. And it's in your book of Jasher. It's in your book of Jasher, chapter three. Let me see here. Let me get the verse. Yes, in your book of Jasser, chapter 3, verse 13. Let's see if I got it up here. Book of Jasher, chapter 3. What well, verse 13? And the, these are the generations of Enoch, Medusa, Elisa, Emelik, the three sons, and their sisters, Melka and Nama. You know, this Nama will be found out throughout your Bible many times. It's a good name, and she is a deity. Nama, so there we go. His two daughters. One of these people was probably, well, it could be Nama, a serpent. And she married one of the so-called well, Nephilim. And I proved that in one of my videos prior. 
if you want to go back and look, I proved that through her lineage that that is Enoch's enemy. You know, when you're nice and you're doing a lot of stuff, you have more than one name. Like in people in your local neighborhood that do a lot of fucking street shit or whatever, are known for this or known for that, they have more than one name. Well, Enkimi is one of his. And he had two daughters, and one of them married Murdoch. Now, Leviathan can be found in your uh, Bible. And the way they describe it in Christianity and whatnot, in your Tanakh, it's the same person as Tiamat. It's a great dragon queen. And you may have different verses describing, well, well, shouting him out. Well, you King James, you have the book of Revelations here. And it talks about the beast out the sea. And it talks about the beast out the earth. The first one may not be Leviathan, but it sure is a beast with nonetheless. And the second one, the beast out the earth, well, it sounds like her. And behold, another beast coming up out of the earth, and she had two horns like a lamb, and spake at and spake as a dragon, and she exercised all the powers of the first beast before him, and caused out the earth and them which dwell there in worship. The first beast with deadly wounds was healed, and he doeth great wonders, so that he make fire come down from the heaven on the earth the sight of men, and deceiveth them and dwell on the earth by means of these miracles he had powers. It doesn't matter if describing as a he, it's still a freaking beast, the same beast. Well, pick one. Now, in your Bible, they also describe the Queen of Heaven. The Queen of Heaven, who has a title given to the number of ancient sky goddesses in ancient Mediterranean Near East, and particularly Anit, Isis, Inna, Arta, Hera, and possibly Asher and Jeremiah. See, the thing about these uh, female deities, it's the same person with different names all over the place. It's the same person. So in the Bible, it talks about Tamar. And Tamar... In some verses referred to, to a woman. But the only time they refer to this as something else is a place. Which they named after somebody who's, I, I guess, divine. In Ezekiel 47, 19, on the south side, it will run from tomorrow as far as. On the south side, it will run tomorrow as far as the waters. Of Mekrabop Kodesh alongside the Wadi of Egypt and Mediterranean Sea. Well, it's not named after tomorrow, they talk about Samuels. In Jeremiah, they talk about the Queen of Heaven. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have nothing. We have nothing and have been perishing by the sword. Now, when you read Jeremiah, you'll find a pattern. 
and the pattern would be every time Israel doesn't worship the deity, well, the goddess deity anymore, they start to, you know, they start to perish. But with other deities, they're just fine. The prophets has vague against the worship of Canaanite, Canaanite Baals. However, Asher cults were never persecuted like Baals were. The Israelites also paid homage to another goddess from Canaanite, Pation Antu, and she was called Esther in the Bible, and reference was made to her in the book of Jeremiah. The Israelites used to bake cakes as offering to Queen of Heaven. They blamed her calamity on the fact that they continued the worship of Ashtoreth. Goddess worship was first in Jerusalem by his idol worshiping wife. Other kings brought into the temple and queen of heaven also worship Egypt elevating fortress. Right. Every time they worshiped a god, a different goddess, and they stopped, they got punished for it. And it never stopped. And for some reason, the Most High wasn't there. It's right there in Jeremiah 44. But we rather certainly carry out every word that did proceed from our mouths by burning sacrifice to queens of heaven, pouring out drink offerings to her, just as we ourselves, forefathers, kings of our princes, did in the city of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. And then we had plenty of food, and we were off, well off, and, set, and saw no misfortune. But since we stopped burning sacrifices, the queen of heaven, and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked everything and met our end by the sore and famine. And what I'm saying, we were burning sacrifice the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offers to her without our husbands that we made a sacrifice caking and our image and poured out drink offers to her. Everybody wants to claim, say that Jerusalem went off and that's what they get and 